Hi everyone, Dan from On One here. Today I want to show you a basic portrait workflow. I'm going to show you how to pick out the photo you want to work on in Browse by comparing them to pick out the best, then using the portrait tab inside of the edit module to go ahead and retouch the skin and enhance the eyes and the mouth in your portraits. Let me show you how it works. Here we are in Browse and I have a bunch of different photos from an engagement session. There's a few hundred photos in here. What I want to do is I want to go through and find which one I want to do some retouching on. Now, you can simply go into detail view and you can arrow from photo to photo. And a lot of times that's not a bad way to look at your photos, but sometimes you really want to be able to compare them, especially when you have a couple or series of photos that are really close to each other. So let me show you how you can do that. I'm just going to select a range of photos that are similar that I want to pick out which one I want to use. I'm going to grab this whole set and I'll go into compare mode. Compare mode gives you a side-by-side -side view of all of those photos at once. And then you can simply throw out the ones you don't like. All you do is click on a photo you don't want. Let's see, I don't want this one because I really want her eyes to be open. And I'll just hit the slash key. The slash key removes it from my selection. So there we go. That one goes away. Uh, again, we want to see her eyes. So I'm going to get rid of that one. Let's keep looking through these guys. I can even zoom in if I wanted to. So I could click and you notice it'll zoom in on these photos. He's a little out of focus on that one. So we don't want to use that one. Let's see. You know, I don't really like her tucked under his chin. So I'm going to throw out those ones as well. And, you know, I kind of want this to be a vertical shot. So it leads me down to these two photos. Now I can pick out which one I like the best. You know, between these two, I kind of like the lighting on her face on this one. So that's the one we're going to use. So then I just click on the edit module. Inside the edit module, you'll see tabs for develop effects, portrait, and local. Develops where you can do your basic raw adjustments. Effects are for doing special effects. What we're interested in today is the portrait tab. You can see how it's automatically found the faces in my photo. This photo has two different faces, so it's added them right up here. Each face can have its own portrait filter, so I can adjust each face independently. It's automatically added the first one for me. To add another one, I just simply click on the face I want to work on. Let me show you how I would use it. By default, it's not going to do anything. It's not going to change your photo. You then turn on the things you want to do. So if I want to retouch the skin, I simply turn on the skin retouching section. Let me zoom in a little bit so it's easier to see this in action. The skin retouching is going to reduce blemishes. It's going to smooth out the skin, kind of like uh, powder on the skin. It can reduce shine and also even out the color across the skin as well. And that's all controlled by these simple sliders. I don't have to go in and paint anything in or make any complex selections. It just does it for me. Then when I want to retouch the eyes, all I do is simply click on the eye tool. Then I click on the center of each eye and we'll add an overlay for each eye. This will help me to pick the area that I want to adjust without having to use a brush tool and a lot of fancy brushing. I can just simply adjust the overlay. The overlays don't have to be perfect either. It still uses some intelligent color range limitations within those areas. So there we go, we've added the eyes and now I can come down and I can use the whitening slider to whiten those up and enhance the detail. Same thing if I want to enhance the mouth. I just click on the mouth tool it tells me click on the corners of the mouth. I'm just going to click on the corners and it adds an overlay for the mouth. I'm just going to adjust these down so that I'm selecting the lips and the teeth independently of each other, just like that. You can move and adjust these and you can move and adjust them even after the fact if you make a mistake. There we go. Let's go down to the mouth section. I'm going to whiten those teeth a little bit more and turn the lip vibrance up a little bit. I'm using a little stronger setting than I normally would. It's mostly so you guys can see how this works. Let's go ahead and I'm going to turn that on and off so you can kind of see it before and after. So there you go, there's before and there's after. Now I can use the face's brush to fine tune the skin mask while I'm here as well. Let's say that in this case, it's not going to get down into her neckline. We're going to find the face automatically, but we don't extend beyond that. So we want to make sure we protect things like the hair. So in order to add the neckline in, I just simply grab the face's brush. It's set to paint in. Let me make my brush a little bit bigger here. And now I can paint right down here through her neckline and it'll add skin retouching to her neck. I could also do the same thing by painting out to make sure it didn't get into her hair or maybe her eyebrows. I'm gonna use a small brush. I'm just gonna pull down the option or the alt key so that I'm set to paint out instead of paint in. And I'll just paint right across her eyebrows to make sure those stay sharp. There we go. Now, if I want to go and retouch the gentleman, all I do is click on his face. It will add a new filter for him. You notice that 
she's down here rolled up. Here's a new one for him. I could even name them if I wanted to, just simply double click on them. I'll just call it his and hers in this case. So here's his, and this one's hers. Let's go back to his layer. Let's move over so we can see him. And I'll just do the same process. I'm gonna turn on that skin retouching. I'm gonna use a smaller amount of smoothing in his case, because I don't really want to smooth out the stubble on his face. But I do like to use a high amount of blemishes to help reduce blemishes like acne and fine lines. There we go. Let's click on the eye tool to add his eyes in. One, two, adjust those overlays. And now I can adjust the amount of whitening that we add to his eyes and the amount of detail that we add to his eyes as well. I don't need to add the mouth. He doesn't have any teeth that I want to enhance or lip color that I want to enhance, so there's no need to add that. And I could use that same face's brush to remove some of the smoothing from the stubble on his beard. Again, I'll just hold down the option of the Alt key to engage the mask to paint away the stubble. Perfect, let me zoom out a little bit so we can see both of them at the same time. And let's take a look at our before and our after. There's our before right there without any adjustments and after. Each face can have its own retouching. Each face can be masked and manipulated independently because it automatically detects each face and puts the results of the retouching for each face on its own filter, think of it like its own layer, it's easy for me to go in and mask and adjust those independently. That way I can have a photo of multiple people with different settings, but yet I can still save presets and apply it to each face independently. It's a super efficient way to retouch your portraits. Thanks for watching.